Alrighty, so today is tour day. We have a big eight hour tour today filled with seeing the Sphinx, seeing pyramids, seeing a museum, eating lunch, and doing some shopping, just a little bit for souvenirs. So we had a bomb, bomb, bomb.com tour guide. His name was Sam. He first took us to Sakata to see the very first pyramids that were ever built. Um, he let us know that, of course, the first pyramids were built out of sand, and as you can all guess, that didn't work out too well. And so they changed it to the step pyramid that you see right there. And the people weren't really feeling the shape, even though they did in a step shape as if it was steps to heaven, but they wanted the shapes to be a little bit more different than the homes you see in the city. So they decided to make the edges smoother and make it more of a triangle, and that's how we have the shape that we all know the pyramids are. So I gotta say, seeing this step pyramid in person was mind blowing. And I probably, you're gonna hear me say this again throughout the video because just knowing that these structures were built by people who do not have the technology we have now and that it's still standing thousands of years later, it will forever be crazy and mind blowing to me. Like these people were so smart. These, these are real hieroglyphics. They're, those are real stars on the ceiling to obviously emulate the sky. Uh, this, these hieroglyphics are, are telling a story. Those shapes, like those round shapes are called cartouches that you see. Those are people's names, letting you know who wrote those things. This is a tomb. There was not a body or a, a sarcophagus in it. Um, it was empty. And the cool thing about this room is that you could kind of see the blue dye that they'd used back then, it was still showing. Now getting out of the tomb was kind of cool to me, which is why I'm videoing it. You have to walk low um, until you can get out. And it's it was just an amazing experience to be inside of a tomb. To say that I can, to say that I've been inside of a tomb is, is pretty cool. And so we walked the rest of the grounds. Sam told us more history. He's a certified Egyptologist, which I didn't even know was a thing. And so he was so knowledgeable and so smart. That's more information about the Step Pyramid. And then of course, he suggested we take pictures. You know, we gotta take pictures and video to show that we were there. Because if it wasn't on Instagram, then it didn't happen. What you're seeing here are tombs that they just discovered three months ago, which we thought was amazing that they are still finding tombs to this day. Next, we head to the museum, which is in the city of Memphis, which actually used to be the capital of Egypt before 3200 BC. There's many temples in that side before. The cover of the columns carved by what? By hieroglyphic inscriptions. What did you say, Sam? Hieroglyphics. Hiero means secret. Graphics means an inscription. This is a statue, or remains of a statue, of Ramses II, one of the greatest rulers in ancient Egyptian history. Um, this guy, according to our our tour guide Sam had 179 kids, 38 wives, and he ruled for 67 years. He had me at 179 kids. I was blown away by that. But even more fascinating is this statue. The fact that it was built from one piece of rock, and you can see all of that detail, like the muscle definition, the hieroglyphics, what's in his hand, his beard, the crown, um, and if you notice, not on the side I'm standing on right now, but on the other side, it's been a little eroded because, amazingly enough, somebody just found this particular piece of this statue just floating in water one day. It was just floating in water. Imagine that you're walking down the side of the street and you see this big old statue floating in water. That was crazy to me.
This was funny to me. One, because this is still a hit in 2023. Number two, because at one point our driver was singing along. And number three, because we heard it in Cairo, Egypt. It was funny. It's time for lunch. And on this tour, we eat a proper Egyptian lunch which consists of several appetizers before we get the main course. There are no menus. You just get the meat option, the chicken, or the vegetable. So to start us off, we have some sauteed eggplant, baba ganoush, some yogurt, some olive and cucumber salad, some beets, and what me and Tremaine called a potato salad before we start. Then also there's a bean soup coming, some vermicelli soup, some bread. All of this is prior to us even getting the meal. Once we get the meal, we get um, some sauteed vegetables, french fries, and more eggplant. All of this is really good, but we are full because you see the starters, they were a lot just to start with. Next up, we go and see how they make papyrus, which was the first ever form of paper. So this video that you're watching is a sped up process of how they make the papyrus paper which was really interesting to see. I didn't know that people were, they were still making papyrus paper. Um, it's a, a process, as you can imagine, that takes a couple weeks um, and it can take, the time can depend on how dark you want the paper, which is what she was just showing us. The darker you want it, the longer the paper has got to sit in water. And I just thought the process was really interesting. And you can only get real papyrus paper from places like these that are government run because there are plenty of fakes out there which she explained to us as well who are making fake papyrus paper but if you're going to a place like we went to that is controlled by the government then you're sure that you're getting the real thing i did not know that papyrus was so durable that you could tear it up and fix it back up again which is what she's showing us obviously you can't tear it up multiple times but you can tear it up and repair it at least once you can crum crumple it up and it'll be bounced back strong as ever. With the key of life, it opens the paradise from heaven. Inside the paradise, we have Osiris, God of paradise. Eyes and left is God of beauty and magic. Also, we can see lotus flower and virus plant symbol of peace and love. The river Nile here, symbol of eternity inside the paradise. So now I'm gonna ask you a question. If I take you hard and put you, it will be happy or light? Light. Light. I think all women will be light. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. The next one here is the family tree. With the thick, happy life, happy family. We can see here father, mother, then the children are down the tree. The mother with her wings to protect her children, and the father here looking the other way to protect all the family members from any enemies. So all the ancient people used to put their family's name around the tree symbol of unity between the family members. Then it is one of the This one here is the Egyptian calendar, the fullest idea ever about timing in ancient time. We can see here four double shapes of God Horus he fell to four directions, four single ladies, four seasons. When we count all of them, we will get 12 people, refer to 12 months of the year, with 24 hands, refer to 24 hours of the day. And at the middle, you can see all our zodiacs and the star signs like Leo, Libra, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer. Which one is the sign? Cancer. And you? Sagittarius. Yeah, like me, sister. The last one here. A <laughs> little discount for you. No one Pisces? No discount. No. <laughs> okay. The last one here is the wedding card, the first love story ever and first proposal in our oh, history wow. between King Gitod and his wife. She offers him lotus for our symbol of love, asks him to marry her. When the king touched the flag with left hand, that's mean I accept you, love, and they will marry you. Why left hand? Because closer to the heart. That's why with the wedding ring, the left hand, not right hand. So what if the king touched the flag with right? That's mean I accept you, just the flower, not you, love. So bye bye, my lady, my heart, not. Remember <laughs> the Next up are the Giza pyramids, which are touted as 
the only remaining wonder of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So even pulling up to see the three of them is like, wow, okay, we are really doing this. And then we finally see it in person. Look at how massive that is. <laughs> and of course, Sam insisted we take pictures. And this was his suggestion to take pictures as if we were climbing it. And he also suggested these next two pictures. He knows what he's doing. He believed that the king would have the magical power to resurrect them again from them. That's why the area here belongs to one family, the fourth dynasty, father, son, Grandson. Mm, okay. So where is the big father? Yeah. Tahshur. The pent pyramid and the red pyramid. You remember? Yeah. Yes. He's the big father. And then his son and grandson and grandson and grandson. Let's ride some camels. This was fun. We had two of the slowest camels ever. They are obviously union workers. I had Charlie Brown, Tremaine Road, Mickey Mouse. They were the sweetest, non-smelliest camels I've ever seen in my life. And it was so much fun. <laughs> The last stop on the tour was to see the Sphinx, which is a human head on a lion's body to represent strength. And it means beautiful creature in Greek. And our tour guide, Sam, suggested we give her a little kiss. A little snack. A little snacky snack after a long day of touring the pyramids. How was the pyramids? We still don't know how they got built, but they built them things. They built them, and they lasted five thousand years, thousands of years. Now, can we talk about the strawberry juice, please? I never in my life had strawberry juice. This is fresh <laughs> strawberry juice. Like juice from strawberries. Listen, my God has changed my life. It's changed my life.